Hello and welcome to the launch of a very special campaign, Cashless Bano India. This campaign to create awareness and to educate the masses about digital payment solutions. It's a unique moment because India will technologically leapfrog in digital payment. It will make India a more formal economy. And if we can work collectively on the common sets of challenges that we have to drive digital India, I think we will be richer as a whole uh, industry. And now I want to just turn to what are potentially some of the roadblocks and how do we overcome the roadblocks. Now, two aspects to that. I want to just start off with you. One, he said that somebody will say that I don't tax. 18% tax, 15% tax, whatever tax is, I don't have to give tax. I don't have to give tax, so I want to give cash. Now that, I guess, Amitabh, there is no solution but to just tell the guy, you can't get away for too long. With that, in a sense, the person is, is, is practicing tax evasion. He's wanting to be the main part of the black economy, and you'll have to crack the danda in some, in some way or the other. Uh, Vikram, there's a big uh, need for a change of mindset. You know, I mean, digital transactions also about use of technology. You know, so you need change of mindset. You need a totally radically different India, which, is, which realizes that the government will not tolerate any more this informal economy. But we, how do you change that mindset? You see, demonetization happened and everyone said, okay, this is going to be a, this is an inflection point which is going to trigger that change in mindset. Now, after so many months of demonetization, there are many people who have gone back to the old habits. It's not that that has stayed. They've gone back to using cash. I, I don't know what the numbers are. Maybe you have the numbers. Is digital exactly the same as it was or is it going back down? No. Uh, when the cash came in, for two months, the digital had come down, but started again moving up. And my view is that in the long run, uh, you know, digital is going to move up because of the spread of post machines, uh, with the spread of BMAP, with the spread of Bharat QR code. Things will become very easy. So I don't, I mean, UPI has gone up by 21 times, USSD has gone up by 40 times. Uh, all, all modes of transaction have gone up enormously. The changing mindset as easy as... No, no, it, it, let me give you the technical... Uh, uh, point about this tax evasion because very important not many people understand it you will see see the point is that if he has paid all the taxes on the things he has purchased let's say it's 10 the extra tax which he is going to get is 11 if he doesn't collect that tax he's already paid the 10 he is going to be 10 per out of pocket so this arithmetic has to be understood you see he is the merchant is actually then paying the tax if he collects the 11, he is not paid anything. So he should actually be charging a differential price. Otherwise, he is going to lose. And this arithmetic is not understood. Yes, Once the GST is in that's, place... That's a really interesting point. With, the GST, be, yeah. with GST in place, the merchant will not be able to get the benefit yes. of the tax he And he will only gain one. He, I mean, the, the, he will gain one only. That's, that's, a, that's it. It's a very important he'll point. He will pay out of his own pocket. On. That uh, if they take cash, they are out of pocket. I would like to make some... If he has paid all the tax, I mean, unless he also got it from her. <laughs> I would like to make some two, three points. See, over the period of time when I'm talking about 120 conferences, the first important roadblock was the transaction cost. Neither the merchant wants to pay the transaction cost, nor the consumer wants to pay the transaction cost. Okay. Unless, and, and we talked about banks. Bank says, if we don't get revenue, uh, we are not going to leverage it. Okay. This is one of the major roadblocks. <laughs> In his address, uh, he mentioned government of India is spending 25,000 crores of rupees annually on production of currency. We have suggested government, and through him again we are suggesting that there should not be any transaction cost, neither on the merchant nor on the consumer, but government of India, by way of subsidy, directly make that payment to banks, it will enable and, and will encourage both merchants and consumers to adopt digital payment. Okay, Arin, that's an interesting suggestion. I mean, let's come to you. The question of transaction tax. So one was for somebody actually evading. And Ms. Dr. Virmani said that they need to get the maps into the head that if by evading, you're actually the merchant could be losing. But transaction cost is an issue. I still have people saying, well, if I'm going to pay with a card, uh, I'm going to end up paying 2% more than if I was paying by cash. Uh, what would be the way around that? So I think, uh, uh, quite honestly, if you look at the whole cost of transaction, there is a lot of confusion with respect to the real cost of transaction. There is a cost for credit cards. There is a cost for debit cards. 
Now, what the banking industry is doing, and which is something that's going to happen now across the board, the practice of a blended merchant rate, we are going to move away from that. You're going to have a separate cost for credit, a separate cost for debit. If you look at, uh, Vikram, the cost of debit is actually coming down dramatically. And what is now being proposed as an industry and through RBI, that the cost of, say, an MPQR type transaction will be even lower. And as you look at this is that there is some very significant movement towards creating reasonable price points for a transaction. Okay. What you also have to keep in mind that it's the revenue pool that oils the whole engine for the banking industry to go deploy terminals, sign on merchants, all of that has a cost and someone has to be cognizant okay. of bearing so that before cost. I take his suggestion to the government saying maybe the government should come out with some of that 25,000 crores they're spending on cash as a subsidy. Your thoughts from a banking point of view on transaction costs? Banking sector is also going under a transformation stage and the major, major transactions are going to shift to the digital area. Gradually what banks will be doing it is building up the cost factor in every transaction. What is the cost of a cash transaction? What is the cost of a cashless transaction? And accordingly, and if, both are equally, if both are equally priced, then of course the people will have a parity. They don't get any transaction advantage, whether doing by cash or by electronic okay. medium. Let me get your take on it and let me add one more element before I come back to Amitabh Kant. And that is the element which a lot of people are concerned about right now, which is the question of security. And privacy, uh, let me add that also. So it's all, as Amitabh was saying, you know, everyone's going to have Aadhaar and they're going to be paying with that and the rest of it. But I can't tell you how many people are concerned about, oh, it could get hacked, my details will be known, you know, somebody will come and take all my money away, is it secure, is my identity going to be private? So I want to get your take on that too. Is it something which you hear from many customers? So let me take the cost one first. Um, I think it's very clear that there is a cost to issue a, deb uh, issue a card and there's a cost as far as the, uh, you know, putting those terminals on. But if you look at a debit card transaction, the average is about 1300 rupees. What the industry has come up with is that uh, debit card transactions up to 2000 rupees, which is pretty much 80% of transactions, will be at 25 basis points to the merchant. The customer does not pay any charge. If there is any merchant who is charging you over and above that, it is illegal. Uh, if you bring it to, and you know, master... awareness needs to be spread. That Correct. somebody is saying, if you card, you will have 3% more than that. That person is doing something which is wrong and which Correct. is illegal. Yeah, that's a very good point that's been raised. Now, the challenge traditionally has been, if a merchant indulge in this practice called surcharging, and let's say Access Bank takes away the terminal, another bank will come and install the terminal. Now, that defeats the purpose, because the merchant doesn't feel the heat for surcharging. That is precisely what we are doing as an industry. We have now created uh, and soon to be launched a national helpline which cuts across all payment networks and we will promote it through digital social media channels and really create awareness that if a consumer is getting surcharged for a transaction, they'll be able to call that helpline and provide details on that merchant. Okay. Now at the back end, the industry will share that blacklisted merchant list and make sure that we as an industry don't go out and terminalize. Yes. The question that I raise about safety, security and privacy, which is one of the major existentialist question marks over the entire digital vision that you were talking about. So Vikram, first and foremost, uh, my view is that we are moving from a low volume, high transaction cost regime to a high volume, low transaction cost regime. And as the number of transactions increase, the cost of transaction will radically fall. You know, on credit card, because there's a credit card risk history involved, I can understand. But on debit card, it will definitely radically fall as it has fallen in recent times. As far as safety and security is concerned, let me tell you that government has done all its, uh, uh, you know, it's put in a lot of professional knowledge and expertise in several layers of, uh, uh, to ensure that there's absolute safety and security and I can assure you that uh, we need not worry, we should move on. The march of technology is inevitable okay. and India must technologically leapfrog. Uh, safety and security is on top of our mind and we will take full care. All right, let me just start getting some views. I know Amitabh Khan has to leave us in just three, four minutes. I'm going to come to a final question from him. Some questions from the comments from the audience. Dilip Cherry and I see. We can just get him the mic. We've talked of cash and cashless. We've talked of rural and urban divide. We've also talked of formal and informal sector. But it may also be worth looking, and I don't know how this is being tackled uh, in terms of training, 
there's yet one more distinction we need to make, which is the generational divide. Those like me who are sort of still uncomfortable with anything other than uh, using a credit card and have not yet gone on to using Bhim Aadhaar, though now her hearing uh, Amitabh, I'm tempted to download that today and try it. Um, there is, I think, a training need for those who are above a certain age threshold. They are uncomfortable with it, but I think that tech savviness, that comfort, is only a one-time transaction cost. And okay. this is something that I think card companies and everybody needs to invest just that one bit of effort in it. So, Rachna and Ask, I mean, we've got one last uh, comment. And I think, uh, you know, when we are talking about payments and we talked about generation, we talked about merchants looking at that P2P, uh, you know, kind of payment out here. I think one segment which I've seen work very well since I also worked with AMF uh, companies out here is other women. So when we are talking about, uh, you know, literacy out here, I think that's a target group which is very, very important for us to get, it, get into consideration. Okay, Mukesh Bhutani, I see you sitting there. Let me get one thought from you and then I'm going to try and get yeah. Amit up to give a final comment. So I think security is uh, key. Uh, I think uh, every day we get greeted with all kinds of uh, horrifying messages about security. We should, we can ignore all of that, but I think that's really key. I know the government has made several statements, but there is nothing uh, that has been said which comes across as a degree of comfort, uh, particularly for people who are first-time internet and e-banking users. Okay, so security, we are keeping on hearing security in Fiza. Rakesh Dubey, one, one thought from you, yeah, Rakesh Dubey, we can just pass him the... The challenge which we are facing really because we are working in rural area, how to go into the cashless transaction with that kind of women. First is that they are not, they are having only the basic mobile features, so unable to download the BIM, UPI and other. Banks are long away from their houses. So where I think that uh, industry and uh, MasterCard should be coming and that's uh, In any case we are doing in last three, four uh, months in three, four states, digital financial literacy program across UP, MP, Maharashtra, those places. But again, the questions are being asked by these borrowers, that's a how to transact on the mobile, that's one. Okay. Second is that, that's a, we are losing, I think, the sight of certain financial products like NPS, which is very important for these poor women. If we could link with the cashless kind of campaign, I think this will have more uh, a kind of uh, okay. I think a very important point was made about women and I think we need to convert them as the chief uh, you know uh, brand agents and they must become the key promoters and I think India needs to do and I think we in government need to do a lot of more work with women once they become the key agents of change I think uh, men will automatically change. And security, you think that's something which needs to keep on being up, upgraded yeah. and improved? I think a lot of work behind the scene is done by government. I think the Ministry of Information uh, Technology has done a lot of work. The DG Aadhaar has gone on record to say that there's been no breach. Uh, you know, and uh, simply because someone releases someone's Aadhaar number doesn't mean that there's a breach of Aadhaar's uh, security at the back. It's absolutely impeccable. A lot of work has gone behind cyber security on, on these issues to ensure that there's absolute security behind the scenes. Yeah. So uh, I don't think we need to make an... Uh, we, uh, the last point I want to make is that whether we like it or not, and uh, India should not lose this opportunity, technology will drive us. And that's happened all over the world. If Kenya can do it with MP, so India will do it. And India will do it in a much faster, much quicker manner. Amitabh Thak, thank you so much for joining us. I know thank you have a flight to catch, so we won't keep in you any further. The rest of us will continue. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Virmani, now, if, if I could just throw some of those same questions to you, uh, specifically on infrastructure and on security, which have been, which yeah. at least from the audience and the experts out here, they seem to be key concerns. Yeah, I, I want to talk about security because I think there's, uh, unfortunately, uh, whether it's deliberate or otherwise, obfuscation on this issue. Uh, on both sides, the critics and, and the government. Uh, to me, the issue is not whether government has enough security for Aadhaar or other things, it's the use of this data and these information bases and the creation of such bases in the private sector. And of course in private, for the time being, I have to include the public sector banks. So uh, there it's really the job of the regulator. We, ha we have to ask the regulators, RBI and, and the IT uh, regulators. All right, so let me just ask all of you this crucial question of infrastructure and security. 
I personally feel that, uh, and I agree with Dr. Nani that, you know, you need an, a full industry, public, private partnership on the question of safety and security. To his point on global trends, this cyber security has now become an organized crime industry. I'm going to give you an example, a live example. This is going back uh, a few years, but similar incidents have happened repeatedly. An ATM, a bank gets hacked, and all that was hacked out of that was about 10 to 12 card credentials out of the bank system. Those cards were replicated multiple times, and out of 28 countries, ATMs, money was withdrawn. And in a span of half an hour to 45 minutes, you had essentially millions of dollars of fraud happening. Now, what you see is a but combination of... the individual of, card ho uh, holders yes. don't end up paying for it, companies like yours. The individual card holders don't end up paying for it. It's the banks and the networks and others look at, you know, who was who had any kind of negligence or what have you, and where were the weaknesses in the overall value chain. But Vikram, the bigger point is when incidents like this happens, it shatters confidence. Yeah. And at the very nascent stage of a digital economy, we can't afford to have a breakdown in confidence, whether it's the consumer side, whether it's the merchant side, or financial institutions who feel that this is too risky for us to undertake a, 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 a commercial so model. It's important to go on focusing on this and to find solutions to the same security issue. I, I completely agree with that. Um, uh, and I think for financial institutions in general and you know, particularly banks in India, uh, this, is, this is a conversation that is constant at a board level. Uh, I don't think you can ever take your eye off the ball as far as cyber security is concerned. And, and I, I think ultimately you can't fight cyber security with regulations. You've got to fight technology with technology. Uh, and to be able to use data, uh, to be able to use velocity checks, uh, to be able to, uh, to understand you know, whether this particular transaction meets you know, the kind of characteristics that a particular customer has. And, and that's what you know, sort of banks like us are, are now doing uh, okay. to be able to tackle this. But you can never take your eye off the ball on this one. Uh, any final quick thoughts that you want to leave us with? Well, I think, you know, uh, I'm really delighted that this uh, participation and comments from public at large, the merchant community, and, and this is precisely what this program and this, over the next few months, we want to create this engagement. Yeah. And as we do this as a, in a collaborative manner, a lot of the issues will get a, a high degree of attention, and hopefully we'll find solutions together. Yeah, and that, I think that's the perfect note on which I want to leave the program, because at the end of the day, this is something that all stakeholders have to come together and try and find answers, whether it's the banks, whether it's the merchants, whether it's the consumers, whether it's the government, everyone is card, card, card companies, everyone is going to have to come together and try and find the correct solutions to be able to really push towards digital payments. Because the targets actually can be really ambitious and if you are to get to the revolution that Amitabh Kant was talking about, we're going to have to solve lots and lots of those residual questions and try and find answers for them as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for, for watching. We'll be back again to try and see how this entire journey is rolling forward. Thanks for watching.